the mic. Can everybody hear me okay? All right, excellent. All right, thanks for coming, everybody. This is uh, Surveillance Using Spare Stuff. Uh, my name is Matt Shear. Um, I have a handle of Circa. If uh, anybody wants to follow me or send me a tweet on Twitter, I think I've had this account for years and have officially one follower. Um, so I would welcome more. Um, the copy of the slides are out in SlideShare. And so I don't like talking about myself a whole lot, um, but probably like everybody in this room, I'm a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, there's a number of them right there. Um, so a quick disclaimer here, uh, the information uh, material presented is for educational purposes only. Uh, the presenter is not responsible for its use or misuse. Uh, no warranties or guarantees implied or otherwise are in effect. Uh, use of these tools, techniques, and technologies are at your own risk. Um, so bottom line is if you uh, do something uh, silly like uh, stalk somebody, uh, violate somebody's privacy, um, steal usernames, passwords, pins, launch codes, don't blame me. I told you not to do it. Um, I'm not a lawyer, but one thing I do understand is that uh, surveillance laws vary very much from uh, jurisdiction to jurisdiction. So please consult with an attorney familiar with the laws and ordinances in your area before conducting any surveillance activity. Um, so how this all got started, um, really it was sort of a odd thing where I was looking at some of my old smartphones and thought, you know, I've got a few of these. They're not really doing anything. They're just sitting in a drawer collecting dust. Um, there's got to be something I can do with them. Um, so by a show of hands, anybody here uh, have old smartphones they're not currently doing anything with? Uh, hands all over the room. So uh, I was one of those people. Um, so I started looking into it. Um, decided the IP cameras sound like a uh, fun project. Um, since it was just spare equipment I already owned, there was a low cost, low barrier to entry. And so um, some reasons you might want to conduct uh, surveillance would be to protect um, physical assets from threats such as dumpster diving, um, theft, vandalism, and destruction. Um, you know, dumpster diving has been around for uh, a long time, so, uh, you know, it would give you a means to sort of monitor uh, what's happening around the, uh, the dumpster out back. Um, and also to protect physical barriers um, or perimeters from threats, uh, such as lock picking. Um, there are a lot of uh, things you can do with locks that uh, you can get ones with uh, tighter tolerances, more pins, offset pins, any number of things to sort of make it harder. Um, but uh, a determined skilled lock pick uh, still often get through. Uh, this just gives you a chance to sort of see and find out what's happening and uh, perhaps uh, at least, if nothing else, have some evidence uh, available. Uh, and then uh, social engineering infiltration. Um, if uh, you find a weird device somehow connected to your network and you think, well, how did that get in this area? And maybe you remember that in your research and development uh, environment, some guy wearing a suit that looked completely out of place was walking through, kicked over a trash can. You thought, well, that was kind of odd. So this will let you sort of have a chance to go back look at your pictures, look at your video, and uh, try to figure out what was happening there. Um, and then uh, simply trespassing, uh, all things you can do with surveillance. Um, the components of an effective surveillance system, uh, in my mind, consist of centralized management. Uh, that's a way to manage multiple cameras in one centralized location. Uh, monitoring and detection, um, obviously, is a, uh, a very big key to sort of try to uh, thwart things in progress. Collecting video or audio um, to sort of capture what was happening and when, uh, very important. Uh, alerting is also another key component to know when an area has been breached or something is happening. Uh, but you do want to try to minimize false alarms. Uh, you don't, it doesn't do you a lot of good if you're getting alerts every two minutes that, you know, a bird flew by, um, so you want to try to uh, eliminate as much noise as possible so you're only getting alerted on actual critical events. Uh, and then finally, archival and retrieval, um, another uh, important step to uh, be able to uh, have 
video uh, to turn over to law enforcement as an example. Uh, if you were able to capture um, a crime as it had happened. Um, we'll wrap back around to those in a moment, but we'll talk about uh, some of the uh, spare or low cost equipment you can use in a uh, surveillance system. Um, smartphones, old smartphones are fantastic. Um, what makes them great is a smartphone is essentially a pocket sized computer. Uh, really, a smartphone without active cellular service is very much like what an iPod Touch was uh, a number of years ago. Um, generally speaking, people don't carry two devices because they have one smartphone that's their current one that generally does most everything they want already. Um, but even uh, older phones that were not high-end have pretty decent uh, video quality to them. Uh, we're not trying to capture images and video that is you know, going to be your wedding album or your senior photos. We're just trying to get enough detail that we can clearly identify what was happening. Um, and uh, they've all got built-in microphones, which is great if you want to capture audio. Uh, and this is a key one. Um, all smartphones have built-in Wi-Fi support. That makes them very easy to attach to your network uh, to... Uh, um, sort of centralize everything um, and also they're very easy to power um, wall chargers are readily available uh, you can get external battery packs to give yourself extended run times uh, there are even cellular chargers that will help keep a uh, phone powered where you generally don't have uh, power available uh, depending on the phone it might even be able to run off of a uh, you know, USB extension um, and then oftentimes they'll support extra storage, uh, be it an SD card or if you want to root or jailbreak your device, you can usually do USB to go or some other function to extend the internal storage capacity of a smartphone. Uh, and they're inconspicuous. They can be hidden in plain sight. Uh, and so if you walk into a room and uh, you see a cell phone that's plugged into a wall, you're generally going to think, oh, well, somebody is just charging their phone. What you're probably not thinking is that, hey, this thing could be recording everything that's happening in this room and everything that's going on. So, again, just hidden in plain sight. Uh, and then spare stuff item, old router. Um, if you find yourself upgrading to an AC quality router or maybe you want Google's new OnHub uh, to sort of do some smart routing, uh, a lot of times you can take these old routers and install a custom firmware such as DDWRT or Tomato on them. Um, also, uh, the great thing about routers is that they are fantastic at uh, uh, basically uh, routing traffic between two networks. So they lend themselves to network segmentation. Uh, another spare stuff item is an old computer. Uh, and an old computer may be repurposed to run Linux with ZoneMinder. And we're going to touch on ZoneMinder quite a bit uh, in this talk. Um, the only real note here is that you might need a beefier system if you're monitoring a very large volume of cameras. Uh, this is kind of an optional item, certainly not required, but if you want to have sort of a night vision for pretty inexpensive, you can use an old reflector lamp. Uh, or if you have an old trouble lamp in your workshop or garage, or even a floor lamp will do, uh, you can fit these with an infrared light bulb. Uh, it's just a very inexpensive way to broadcast a uh, large amount of IR into an area. Uh, one word of caution is the infrared light bulbs are generally used for heating lamp purposes, so they tend to run hot. So if you're using a lamp, probably want to make sure that the uh, shade or the dome is metal or glass or something that isn't flammable. Um, you probably don't want to find yourself in a situation where, yeah, that building we wanted to protect is nice and protected and secure, but the problem is the lamp set the place on fire and it burned to the ground. Uh, sort of defeats the purpose of protecting it. Uh, and other spare stuff items include uh, old tab tablets and uh, dedicated IP cameras. Uh, the nice thing with uh, um, these tablets is it's, you know, just a in some regards a uh, larger smartphone. Um, typically you're going to find these things are more expensive if you want to buy one on the used market than say an old cell phone. Uh, but a lot of times you can find uh, these things listed on deal sites, auction sites, and pick them up pretty inexpensively. 
Uh, dedicated IP cameras are great. Uh, what makes them nice is they have built-in motion control and a lot of times infrared built into them. Uh, it's a big plus. Um, but there's no hard and fast rules on this. There's nothing that says you can't take your surveillance system consisting of five old smartphones, uh, an old tablet, and three IP cameras. You can use any combination of devices you want. Uh, you can monitor them all. Um, so you can mix and match this stuff very easily. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I personally sort of like the, the FOSS cam uh, pictured here. I think that's the FW8910. Um, but uh, there's a number of good ones out there. Um, these are just the ones I've, I've worked with. They tend to get pretty good reviews. Um, but uh, generally what i found is these things aren't generally too picky as long as you got, you know, a good quality picture and, uh, you know, the features that you're looking for. Yes. Yeah, it's a good point. The uh, the better quality camera, the better quality image you're going to get. Um, I think for surveillance systems, uh, the quality is a little less critical as long as you're capturing the important detail. Uh, but certainly there's nothing wrong with getting a better quality image. Um, and uh, the response times on these is, is generally pretty good. Um, so some notes on night vision. Um, actually, every camera is pretty much capable of night vision. Uh, but infrared lighting alone isn't going to give your camera night vision capabilities. Uh, what you can do, though, if you're advantageous and bold enough, is you can actually disassemble your camera. And usually around the lens, you'll find an IR, small IR filter, uh, which is a film, plasticky film, that uh, typically is a dark red, blue, or purple. Um, the issue you might run into when you remove an IR filter from a camera lens is that during bright uh, light, uh, even normal lighting, everything will tend to whitewash out on the image quality. Uh, one workaround you can do is uh, these cameras are pretty cheap. These uh, phones are pretty cheap. You can always uh, have one with the IR filter removed and one without and essentially put two different cameras in the same area uh, just to sort of work around those issues. Uh, if you get a dedicated IP camera like the ones we've discussed, uh, then uh, that becomes uh, sort of a non-issue. Uh, since the uh, infrared night vision is, is built into those devices. So um, using smartphones as IP cameras, uh, there's a lot of free uh, IP cam apps available in app stores uh, that will essentially turn your smartphone into a network IP camera. Um, you know, that's generally speaking, uh, my, my advice is try all the free ones you want. Um, you may like some, you may not like others. You've got a minimal investment of just a little bit of time uh, sort of experimenting with them. Um, you can also buy low, there's some low cost apps. You can you know, read reviews to try to get an idea if that's going to meet all of your needs. Um, so these provide a uh, number of ways to small or manage a uh, small number of IP cameras. Uh, there's also uh, um, IP camera monitoring applications that tend to work well on phones and tablets. Um, you can oftentimes find free or low cost apps for that as well. Um, but one thing I want to talk about a lot is uh, ZoneMinder. Uh, if you've never used ZoneMinder, it's a uh, great product. Uh, essentially, uh, it's a free video camera security app suite. Uh, it's designed for low cost, do-it-yourself video security, uh, including commercial or home, CCTV, um, you know, theft prevention, child family monitoring, uh, nanny cam applications. Uh, it supports capture, analysis, recording, and monitoring of video data coming from cameras attached to a Linux system. Uh, the nice thing is, we'll talk about the modes here in a moment, uh, but it supports motion detection, emailed alerts, uh, and remote viewing. Uh, all those features are supported. Uh, the one drawback with ZoneMinder is it doesn't have uh, integrated audio recording uh, built into the default application. Uh, it's a little bit of a drawback, um, and somebody here may have a, a better workaround for this. 
Um, I found that a lot of the IP cam apps I've played around with will support streaming uh, to VLC. Uh, one thing you can do with VLC players, you can dump that out to a WAV file and then later convert that WAV file into uh, some compressed audio format. Um, why I think Zoneminder is great um, is a lot of the camera modes. Um, so you can go with none, which essentially just disables uh, a camera from Zoneminder. The monitor mode um, basically is a live streaming mode if you want to hop on just see what's happening, uh, but you don't want to record anything. Uh, motion detection will capture still snapshots when a uh, motion detection alarm from the camera goes off. Uh, record mode essentially gives you a continuous video recording of a camera view. Uh, motion recording or MoCord uh, uses motion triggered events to begin recording. And then no detect is uh, for external controlled triggers and actions. I uh, haven't really played around with that too much. Um, my understanding is you can sort of do some custom events to trigger camera actions. Um, so the important thing to note is these settings only impact the camera in zone minder. Uh, so for example, if you set a camera on none, it doesn't mean the camera is not actually still capturing the image of what's happening. Uh, it just simply means that the uh, camera is not being displayed in uh, Zone Minder. Um, so configuring email alerting, uh, it's in the Zone Minder console under options and email. Uh, one thing that uh, might be helpful is to uh, consider saying email address to a distribution group. Uh, that includes your SMS numbers uh, so you can get text alerting uh, when a uh, alarm, motion alarm is set off. Um, one of the big things with Zone Minder, what I think really makes it great and sort of sets it apart from just sort of uh, playing around with cameras natively, is it lets you define um, hot zones. And so one of the keys with using Zone Minder successfully is the concept of zones. Uh, zones are essentially an area within an image that you can define for the purposes of motion detection or even ignoring motion. Uh, that helps you minimize false alarms. And what I think is great about this is if you see the car, essentially this person has defined a hot zone that's only recording actions, motion detection actions within their hot zone. Um, so, for example, if something is happening out in the street, you're not capturing that information. It's only when somebody approaches the driveway or the vehicle within that defined hot zone that the recording begins. Uh, so some things that will let you do is that will let you sort of define a zone around a door, for example. Uh, and so you're only capturing traffic when people come in or out of the door. But you're really, when that happens, you're capturing everything that happened in that room at that time. So if somebody is trying to pick a lock, for example, and they've got a buddy standing off to the side, sort of serving as their lookout, you're getting that whole view of the room captured, uh, but it's triggered on the event that you want, so you're not just getting random passers-by uh, unless they happen to be walking in front of the door. Uh, it's very powerful to sort of help minimize those false positives uh, in getting too many alerts um, for non-issues. Um, archiving and retrieval within ZoneMinder, uh, the USR share uh, ZoneMinder events and images folders are generally where the data is stored. Uh, one option you have is that you can use uh, cloud storage synchronization like Dropbox, for example, or any of the other alternatives out there. Um, and essentially you can uh, synchronize those folders off-site uh, for retrieval later. Uh, could be important if uh, your system that has all your recordings, something were to happen to it, it got destroyed. Um, and then uh, just some good practices in general for uh, surveillance. Uh, the important thing, I think, when you have an IP camera is not putting it directly on the Internet, uh, lest your own security cameras be used against you. Uh, we, you know, we talked about the FOSCAM systems, which I have. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm constantly getting firmware update e email alerts. Um, security is sort of an afterthought on these devices, and so uh, you don't want to sort of have a camera used against you. Um, you might, for example, set up a home alarm system to monitor what's happening in your home, 
And if you bought that new 72 inch 4K Ultra TV that you have hanging on the wall, the last thing you want is for somebody else who also has access to your camera to know when you're not home, when they can come over and help themselves to it. Uh, so you don't want these things to be used against you. Uh, it's a very important point. Uh, I would recommend using VPN uh, for remote camera monitoring. Sort of keeps it directly off the internet, gives you an extra added layer of security around that. Uh, and then generally follow good networking security practices, uh, at least as much as you can, particularly if you're using cameras on a wireless network. Um, you know, segment your IP cameras off from the rest of your network with appropriate access controls in place. Um, the default passwords to most devices and apps are very well known, uh, so by all means change the default logins, use strong passwords, that's just common sense. Uh, but uh, very important, and also um, I would, in addition to keeping these off of your network, uh, if you're doing SNMP monitoring, um, I would try to uh, not use the same community strings that you use on your other network devices or systems. Uh, if one of these devices did get compromised, you don't want somebody else to sort of be able to tell instantly what else is going on your network. Uh, and then patches and updates. Um, so uh, we talked a moment ago about sort of firmware updates uh, and the importance of them uh, because they come out quite frequently. So keep your camera firmware, phone firmware, software updated. And also, even though ZoneMinder essentially functions as an appliance, you want to remember it's running on a live Linux system. So keeping that host up to date with patches is incredibly critical. Uh, because once that system's compromised, then everybody has access not just to your cameras, but your archives as well. Um, so just always remember that. Uh, and uh, that's really about all I have. Uh, a lot of people I want to thank um, for helping make this possible. And uh, we're running short on time, but I have time for maybe a question or two if anybody has any. All right, well, I think that's it then. Thank you, uh, everybody, for attending. Uh, enjoy the rest of the conference.